All right, look, I don't know what thumbnail we're going to go with, but I promise you that Starbase did not explode. It's time for another Starbase summary. Remember, if you can't stand my voice, you can choose the audio track that does not have it. Just click on the settings. <laughs> Kicking it off with some test tanks over this way. Out at Massey's, you can see that they've added these test structures to what we're affectionately calling Test Tank 16. I promise you that when I say air quotes Test Tank 16, I'm making the motion with my fingers, but maybe they aren't air quotes. I don't know. I do appreciate the feedback in the comments. Over at the launch site, there's Booster 15 all the way on the OLM. It's just the regular LM. It's now the LMA, the Launch Mount A, or Pad A, as you will. Um, trailer backing up there. Nice. But we're going to get some fiery action out of this shortly. Be on the lookout for all the telltale sti signs. Steins. Signs. <laughs> There's the booster transport stand in the foreground, pad B in the background. What you see going down there is the dance floor. We call it the dance floor. Oh, you're so unserious. It's not a dance floor. Well, that's what they, that's what it's called. It is the work platform that can fold in half like a taco and drive around like a sand crawler so that they can safely work on the engines underneath the ship even though it's a huge just empty space below the launch mount because that's where the fire goes. Anyways, that's a static fire stand, a crab stand. So in serious, oh wow, you're reporting so... Seriously, folks, it looks like a crab. All right, there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's jargon that's been generated because we talk about this all the time. Look, at it, it can even crab walk. It can go sideways. How could you tell me that's not a crab stand? Look at the humid South Texas atmosphere freezing onto the side of the tank. Because we're going to get a static fire here. There's the deluge system. Shockwaves going through. And a little bit of audio for you as well. Wow. There was some big piece of debris flying up there. Did y'all see that? It didn't look like a tarp. It was like a very long, skinny string. But if that's as far away as I thought it was, that, that had to be a massive piece of debris. It looked very light. It was flexible like, like a tarp, right? Interesting. Maybe scroll back and look at that. See if y'all see that same piece of debris or if that's like a floater on my eye or something like that. Here we have another view close in. Gah! <laughs> okay, look, I'll say it. The, 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 the water being there, right? And it's, it's water, it's droplets, it's mist. It's everything coming to the village system. It, it gives some mass, some visual mass in the air around the, the launch mount so that when the shockwave hits, you can see it. A lot of times you can't see that, but because the water is there, you can see the shockwave moving through when the engines ignite. Look at this. Bam! <laughs> and this is, look, isn't this such a good angle here? It's right in the, the, the shadow of that leg, right? So that leg keeps the water from coming this way. It keeps the exhaust from coming this way. So you get that direct line of sight right into the fires of the engine during the static fire, that is too cool. <laughs> I'm sorry, oh, you're so goofy, geez, but that is just the cool thing to see. We saw some, uh, it was dumping. It was a lot of vapors coming out at once. It came from the area that tended to be sort of near where the locks is. Were they just purging something? Is this some sort of test, like testing something that the booster may do after it's caught? It's a good question. We're going to see if it continues, but uh, that was an interesting thing we put in the video here. Well, well, because it was an interesting thing. We try not to put non-interesting things in the video, or if, if we do put non-interesting things in the video, we try to talk about them and make them interesting. But uh, you can see this. You see the huge blue spool of cable? You can actually see it roll a little bit on occasion. Look at that massive spool of cable that they're working on in the draw works there. Here we're going to get a roll out. Mega Bay 2 in the background there. Ship on the static fire stand, the crab stand coming at us here. SPMT. Like, look at this. 
it's such a cool idea because the stip the, the stip the ship is integrated into the stand that it will do its testing on. It's not like, oh, well, pick it up and then bring it over here on the transport stand and then get it on the crane and then put the crane on the static fire stand and then swing it over this way. No, no, no. It's just all together. The SPMT, well, I guess to start at the beginning, the cranes, the bridge cranes in the uh, mega bay pick it up and can put it on this transport stand, right? Or the static fire stand. I hope that's true. And then it rolls out on the stand. And then when it gets there, they put it on the static fire stand, I guess, the static fire pad. What's the right terminology there? There it goes right by. And they put it down, but they don't have to take the ship off of it. It's just ready to go. So what a cool way to actually static fire and test these things. Man, those nighttime views with the uh, early year haze is, is a difficult shot there, but uh, there'll be more fire coming out of the bottom of that ship shortly. Back to the launch pad. Booster 15 gets picked up and taken off of the launch mount, having completed its static fire campaign. It's going to go down on the booster transport stand. A little bit different here, right? With the lack of a, uh, a flame trench, like a proper flame trench underneath the original launch mount, and the distance required for the booster to fire its raptors, you can't really do the same thing. Like, can you imagine a stand that looked like the launch mount for the booster that could go back and forth? That's a little tougher than the static fire stand for the ship. So here you do see a separate transport stand from the actual mount that it will launch on its test mission, test flight, whatever you want to say, right? But in any event, it did its static fire, and then it rolled back towards the production site. A lot of talk in chat. Uh, I do keep up with the Starbase Live chat on occasion. It's almost always on one of my TVs, like downstairs. And then I walk downstairs to get a snack or, or hang out on the couch for a minute or take a break, and I'm, I'm reading through chat. And a bunch of people talking about the amount of time it takes between the static fire and the actual launch. And uh, a month, I think, was sort of the minimum that people were remembering there. Sometimes it's longer than that. Wow. What hydraulic line exploded all over you? That's weird. It looked like a giraffe. I wonder, I wonder, that really did look like a hydraulic line that had popped and sprayed. I feel like we need a blood splatter technician to tell us how, what, what they can tell from those splatter marks on the bottom of the booster. But anyways, um, it's not like the booster static fires and then launches one week later, right? It's historically at least a month, of course, always trying to improve that. But uh, here in the second week of February... <clears throat> probably rules out a launch in February, probably looking into the March, mid-March, maybe early April time frame. But like I said, that can always change. You can't just look at the graph and say, well, the graph has always been this way. It'll always be that way. Well, that's not how it works. They're still building this thing, right? They're still making this thing and perfecting these processes and stuff. I'm going to get... I'm going to get comments because I said perfecting, but it's perfecting. I know how to say it. It's just one take. Anyways. Back over at uh, the second launch mount there. Oh, what is this? Stands. They've got some bolts on it, and they've got a hole in the bottom of it. Look, I don't think you're, like, static firing a raptor. That looks like more. It's, it's a little stand. It's a cute little stand. Here we go. Let's put them in context and see what we can figure out about that. It's got some railings on it. Is a vertical tank a good test here? I guess you could also put a large porta potty on top. Does it, like, do people overseas know what that means? Like when I say porta potty, do, what's the what's what is that in like Germany or the UK or I don't know Australia? I'm sure they have other names. It's a honey pot or something, right? Anyways, that was test tank 16, real quick, over at Massey's. Here's Booster 15 getting, uh, I guess, lifted probably off the transport stand there and then put on a work stand in the Mega Bay. Oh, look. Is that somebody on top of it? Yeah, it is somebody riding on top. <laughs> yeah, they're working up there. What are they doing? Are they... Well, they're hitching it up. That's not a person. That's like a... <laughs> At first, it looked like a uh, it looked like a person bending over to put something in that the raceway or china or whatever, but it wasn't. It was a plastic bag flapping. Oh, your commentary is so amateur and un un inaccurate. It's like, come on! It looked like a person. It just happened to be a wacky, inflatable, flailing arm plastic bag man. <laughs> it's all good. Got some tiles. 
there. Ooh, the SPMT is disconnecting and rolling away. It's so cool how they can move. It's like video game movements. It really is too cool. So interesting that they take this apart with uh, the tiles on it. But it does sort of speak to the resiliency of the tile attachment. Now, you didn't see tiles popping off that, even though th that thing was flexing all over. We're continuing on the parking garage mural over here with more stands arriving in the foreground. I, I really think they're putting some sort of paint or coating potentially to help with the adherence of that banner, or maybe they're actually going to paint it directly on there. Work continues on the office building. I'm surprised we don't abbreviate this, T-O-B. No, work, work on the TOB continues. There's our favorite brontosaurus ribs, the flame deflector. Continuing to see some work on that. Going to finish it up with some rapid hits here, it looks like. Another wide shot of the launch site with both towers. Pad A. Not as many, uh, not as many workers around it there. Doing some detailed work up underneath the piping and stuff. The Forbidden Staircase. Chris tweeted something from the uh, from the the NSF account that said there was a Forbidden Staircase during during the launch or static fire. You do not want to be standing here. Oh, there's a forward section for Booster 17. We see all sorts of Booster 17 parts rolling through the open yard. Ah, yes. And here is the Ship 34 static fire. We're going to speed this up a little bit for you. Because this is a little different. It's not a 5 second static fire. It's not a 7 second static fire. It's not even a 12 second static fire. I promise I said static and not status. Is it 20 seconds? No. And look at the composition here, right? The way the wind and lighting worked out the static fire plume, of course, blowing out to the left towards the Rio Grande, actually right over the Rio Grande. But the way that the wind was blowing from that perspective that Caesar had there, the wind or the, the, the plume was sort of back, acting as a backdrop and silhouetting the booster. So all of a sudden, or the ship actually, you saw all of a sudden you could see the ship there with fire going. This is Mary from the other side. We had folks on both sides plus the robotic cameras. Too cool. Little bit of a weird pop there at the end. Saw some comments on that. We see that at McGregor quite frequently. Um, it's down in the stands at McGregor. Doesn't necessarily mean there's anything specifically wrong because that is something that we observe at McGregor all the time. I saw a lot of the usual pundits on Twitter, um, X, sorry, guessing about that. And in any event, <laughs> I don't think it was anything to be too worried about. That's going to do it for this Starbase summary. As always, appreciate y'all hanging out with me, and we will see you nerds later.